This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Oboe Radio, the heart of it all on the Contact Talk Radio Network, where we explore the power of love, unity, courage, and compassion. Are you ready? Join the Oboe team to focus on solutions, sacred practices, and the key players who are busy creating a world that works for all. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. I'm your host, Sherry Herndon, so grateful to be here and happy to be here and feeling, as usual, whenever it's time for Heart of It All and these conversations, I get very excited. I think there's just something very enlivening for me personally and for many when we're in conversations with people who are in their creative edge and sharing their gifts and offering to the world new ideas and projects and initiatives that can really make a difference. And I, I love that I get to do this every Friday. So grateful. So grateful for Contact Talk Radio and this network and all of the incredible programming that's offered here. So today, our conversation theme, and there's going to be a couple of them, but it's about global values. And I'm very excited to introduce in just one moment my guest um, today, who is the, I can't think of a more incredible person to be having this conversation with. And, and really, I just want to invite everyone listening, you know, this is an intimate space we're in. We're like, think of it as like the living room. We're in a living room. We're, we're in a living room salon. We're, we're talking about the things we love. We're sipping tea and, um, we're leaning in and listening and, and feeling what, what, what's happening inside of us as we're hearing about, uh, these different topics. So, um, so let me introduce this uh, amazing woman. This is Karen Miller. She is the author of a book called Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World, where she is applying in this book the wisdom of the ages in a new conceptualization of human civilization in the 21st century. And I'll just just note that that we're in this such a critical phase right now of history that we're really looking for what are those new conceptualizations that we need, these new frameworks. And this book is a perfect example of that. Karen suggests that only a radically different framework of how humanity organizes itself will be sustainable, that we must shift from an isolationist paradigm to a more holistic approach. In addition to serving as the VP and general counsel to the Global Digital Media Consortium behind Ultraviolet, Karen heads an organization called Our New Evolution, one, O-N-E, beautiful, which is promoting initiatives that support global values. And those values are unity, community, life, freedom, connection, sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. Beautiful. I mean, just a very, very inspiring um, naming of these global values. And I love this this uh, last piece before we invite her to join us. The Global Values Facebook page has gained over a quarter million fans and it's primarily from the Middle East and South Asia, and it continues to draw attention from around the world. I, I just think that's really just an incredible um, fact about that page. So, And we'll find out that, give that website as we uh, go into our conversation. So, Karen, it's really a delight to have you here with me and to just be in this conversation about the things we care most about. 
Thank you, Sherry. It's such a pleasure to be here, and um, thank you for that wonderful introduction. You really uh, teed up my work so well. I really appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, it's it's. I want to just share a little bit about um, the connection that we have with each other and how we've just when I got to meet Karen through a mutual friend and it was a, you know, one of these synchronistic um, encounters, which I think more and more when we're in really beautiful alignment with our mission and our life purpose, and we're on, we're on task, we're on mission. We're really feeling that fulfillment. We have these meetings and encounters and all these synchronicities. And about a month ago I had, uh, the opportunity to meet Karen and uh, that's when she gave me her uh, book and I got to dive in and then I guess a couple weeks ago I was like oh I really want to do an interview with you for um, Heart of It All um, just because this topic is so it's I it's a glue it's like values how are we recognizing ourselves as a whole species and how can we name those values um, and really align with them and see that, oh, these are what connect us. We need global values. So it's so perfect that you're here. And I want to give people a taste of a um, little bit of your personal story. Um, just what what brought you to this book? You've been... You've been feeling very called to this work for a while and the time is really right now for this to come out into the world share with us a little how did you um how did you come to write this book and find yourself on this path sure i'd love to talk about that you know i came up with these 10 values uh, in 2004 and it was even quite a journey leading up to that time um you know, through most of my early life, I suffered from a lot of fear and anxiety uh, and had trouble, you know, assimilating into um, social situations and uh, just dealing with uh, life in general. And, uh, you know, through my path, I started practicing, uh, you know, some of these values and, and, and coming by studying uh, different religious traditions and spirituality and self-help, as well as a lot of introspection and work on myself, I really realized that by shifting from a paradigm of fear to a paradigm of love and a world that is seeing the world through fear-based mindset where, you know, everyone's against you, so seeing the world as a welcoming, compassionate place, my life just really transformed from that. So that shifted me um, so that I was able to then, you know, go to law school and, uh, and have a successful career. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but through that personal transformation, I got very involved in a lot of different social transformation groups, um, the Alliance for a New Humanity, the Peace Alliance. I did pro bono work with them. Uh, and, you know, very interested in the green movement. I'm vegan and um, environmental sustainability and peace and social justice and all the many sectors of social transformation that are really um, so powerful at this time. And I started thinking, well, what if we could bring together all these sectors of society? You know, it's um, Barbara Marks Hubbard, um, talks about with the Wheel of Co-Creation, she identifies, you know, many different sectors of society and how they're all converging with uh, um, our creative ability to transform our world. And I saw, you know, all these same people, and including myself, going to very different groups in society that are working on social transformation. So what does the green movement have to do with the peace movement? What does social justice have to do with environmental sustainability? And I really came to see it as a values-based movement, and um, that's how I came up with um, these 10 global values to kind of tell the story of mm -hmm. that we're all connected and we're all one and that everything we do impacts everything else. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I just love that story, Karen. And it's um, there's so many different uh, threads I'd like to follow. But the the first one is um, it's it's really powerful that you've had these experiences with these alliances. So you're already you've had this personal transformation, and then you're in this uh, like connecting with very powerful. Uh, alliances, ways of how we bring people together so that you name the Peace Alliance and the that's Deepak Chopra's Alliance for New Humanity. Not that it's his alliance, but he kind of birthed that. And um, and so many other efforts, you know, mentioning Barbara Marks okay. Hubbard. And, and, and Andy's team and yeah, they exact, all have similar names. <laughs> exactly. And, and actually it's interesting because this radio show, Heart of It All, was uh, founded by, uh, it was birthed through One Becoming One, which was an event and vision of uh, Eric Lawyer, um, my, one of my co-creators and dear friends. And he wanted to see the world shift from fear and separation to love and unity. So you, it was beautiful that you started with that. This impulse that we have um, that is so core to our nature that, it's almost like we've, we forgot so much. And this is like, we're in this time of remembering. And there still is this challenge of bringing together different groups that, you know, don't yet know how to connect with each other across those sectors. So we have these, you know, those in education, those in like peace and spirituality and economy and, and yet they're all working towards similar goals and it feels like the 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 values. I love this quote that you have in your book. Um, it's uh, it's kind of early on. It's in your introduction, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. If we think of ourselves as imaginal discs in the midmorphosis of this caterpillar going into butterfly metaphor, we can think of global values as the bit of DNA that will enable us to bind together in new ways so that we may evolve and emerge from the chaos as a more beautiful incarnation of humanity. So I love that. That Just thinking of global values as the DNA that can enable us to connect in more ways across these different alliances and these networks. Thank you. Yeah, that, that seems, that's the goal is to find this. And I also refer to it as a common thread, something that unites us, um, you know, in, in, in one movement of social transformation. Because I really think it is, like you said, one movement from a fear-based paradigm of separation and isolationism and survival of the fittest to collaboration. And, you know, uh, as, as the compassion game um, just uh, framed it as uh, uh, survival of the kindest. Um, you know, it, there's there's a lot going on in many different sectors of society, and and sometimes I, you know, over the last eleven years that I've been working on this, I've thought, well, maybe there doesn't need to be something that brings it all together. You know, maybe all these separate initiatives are going to go their separate path, and they're still working in the same direction. Um, and you know, there there doesn't need to be further connection of all these different groups. But I think it's really helpful to have a framework to help explain this movement and to help explain this um, mentality of interconnection and oneness mm -hmm. to people who may not necessarily be exposed to these concepts. And they're still working on these transformative projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that by talking in the terms of values instead of necessarily religion or spirituality, um, that could reach more people in, in more sectors of, of, of transformation. And it has now, you know, like, like you mentioned, really reached a, a lot of people uh, in the Middle East. And um, Bangladesh is the, is the country with the most, and there's 100,000 people in mm -hmm. Bangladesh who are following global values on Facebook. Um, 60,000 in Iraq, and then the next biggest countries are Egypt, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Mm. And so I think that it is resonating out there with people mm. who may not otherwise be exposed to these concepts. 
Yeah, there's, it's, uh, the framework of, of where we can name. So when we name that which we share, like values, I love the quote that you actually have it also in the book that I just posted on my Facebook wall that I love so much by, um, Irvin Laszlo about the relationship. Actually, it's not in your book, but you have some quotes by Irvin, but it's a, it's an interview that he had with Tammy Simon from Sounds True. And it was, you know, the relationship of what's the, what's the great tipping point? What, what do we need? What's the, the thing that make the most difference in changing our behavior? And, you know, it gets down to, it's like, it's consciousness, except, and what's, what it connects with that? It's our values. So values, consciousness, and our actions, it's very, very important that we do name these values. I, I think it's, the more I think about what are those trim tabs, those those leverage points for making a, a difference in the world, I believe that global values is a huge one, and it's kind of an untapped space of bringing it into different contexts that can create a kind of an invisible glue that weaves more of the wholeness and the awareness of, oh, right, we do have these values. Oh, how are we aligning with them? Where are we not living into them? Like Irvin, in your book, you mentioned he has a about the planetary ethics. And I feel like global, we need a planetary ethics and we need... Uh, this sense of our oneness and because it changes how we behave and how we make decisions and we need a kind of framework that says we believe and uphold these values so it's it's a very potent uh, moment to be bringing global values out into the world hello Karen Karen do we lose you are you on mute Karen. Oh, sorry. Yes. Hi. Sorry. Okay. You were on mute. <laughs> okay. Welcome um, back. <laughs> thank you. Um, so that just led me to think about game theory. I talk about that in, in my book. And, you know, when you think about being compassionate to people and, and the, the, you know, thinking that we're all one, like we're talking about, um, you know, sometimes it's much easier to be compassionate towards those who we have the closest connections with. So it's easy to be compassionate to members of your family. And it's easier to be compassionate to members of your close-knit community or your church or those, your friends. But to be compassionate towards people who are acting differently than you would like them to or people who you don't have a connection to on the other side of the world it's much more challenging. And so, you know, if you think about it in terms of, of um, game theory, if you're on opposing teams, you see each other as, as not necessarily connected. And if one person wins, the other person loses. But in a non-zero-sum game, um, you see yourself as on the same team. So you're on the same soccer team or you're playing double tennis against someone else. So if you win a point, then the other person on your team wins a point. And so it's much easier to collaborate with those that you see mm. a, the non-zero sumness of mm. your relationship to them. And I think that by, by shifting, helping people shift their perspective to see their mm. relationship and connection to everyone and everything around them, mm -hmm. um, that will help people to be more compassionate towards each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we, you know, I say in the book that the golden rule is the key. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But, you know, people only tend to do that with those that they have the closest connection to, that they see there's a, a non-zero sum game together with that person. And so my goal through Global Values is to help people see that non-zero sumness and their connections to other people through values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it's so important. Um, because we've, we've come from such a paradigm of competition. And even though I see 
oh, our desire to, to be cooperating and to collaborate and to share, there's all this that's emerging in our world. We still have these subtle kind of programs and patterns that we don't often see get subtler and subtler and then you can see the little the competition and so when we actually realize that how can we actually play a game in which we can be competitive with our excellence or our drive to be the best that we can be but never at the expense of someone else like you were talking about with the 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 golden rule um you start with unity as uh the first uh, global value and in some ways it feels like it's the foundation um, and everything is so interwoven as well there's there's so much it's a holistic value set so there's it's they're not separated from each other they're kind of almost yeah, distinctions yeah yeah they're very it's like I I love them and I love the summary at the back of your book um and they're it's not like oh we've never heard of these no one's ever talked about it. it's almost like oh they're all around us let's make them explicit let's right. use them as part of a movement building because this is what you your organization that you're you're heading and have birthed um our new evolution it seems like it's all about that yeah i mean i i i want to be clear that uh yeah like you said these values aren't anything new. Perhaps the way that I've defined them and framed them is somewhat new, but I'm just using these values to help tell a story. Exactly. To help frame this movement um, and, and, and tell a story. Yeah. Um, there, you know, I, I gave a talk recently and someone said, well, there's other values that are, you know, good. <laughs> and I was like, sure there are. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that other values, you know, even saying like laughter is good well yeah it's great you know and it is part of all of this and it helps us connect with each other and express ourselves creative creatively and you know but i picked these 10 as my way of of telling this story i love it and i I've, i've seen lots of different values named and you know people who have organizations and networks they're like here are our values and there's something about having shared shared values that can be named across the board. Like we ascribe to these and, and then we have our, our subtle ways that we, we name them differently in this and this way. That's awesome. But I think there's, we're talking about a glue that we need for kind of creating more of that shared alignment. Um, and, you know, values we have the the universal declaration of human rights and rights and values have a you know a common ground and there's the earth charter which has you know a very powerful value set and naming um but there's a and there's a story that's being told there um i just really appreciate that we could uh start to name and speak about oh yeah our global values that's right and then see how our values are matching up with what we do in the world, you know, um, that to me is the gap. So it's, it's like with what you, you quote Irvin Laszlo in your introduction around the planetary ethics and responsibility. And I think that's where we could say we have, we have accountability. Do we align with these values? And, uh, and, and if so great, and then, Let's be in alignment with them in our actions and behaviors. And I think it could be a real catalyst for more um, responsibility and accountability. Yeah, I think so. You know, if you think about it, all of our actions are based on our values. We have our internal values, and then we make decisions based on those values, and we take actions based on those decisions. And so, in essence, all of our social structures that we have today are based upon our collective or the predominating prevailing values of, of the culture. That's not to say that new ones are emerging and social structures aren't transforming as we speak, but we do all make choices and take actions in the context of everybody else's choices and actions, and all of those are based on what we value and what we want to manifest in the world. So... When it comes down to it, it really comes down to values. And underneath that, as you point out, Irvin Laszlo says, you know, 
makes the connection to between values and consciousness and underneath so underneath the values is, is consciousness. Mm-hmm. I think of consciousness as, you know, the life force that moves all things and that's mm-hmm. evolving itself through our conscious choices. And uh but you know, I think that that's a, a kind of a more uh ephemeral concept that is hard, you know, it, it maybe taking it down to the earth instead of we all value consciousness is helpful <laughs> for some people. Oh, so. yeah, it's it, lots of different ways of, of bringing it forward. And I loved what you just shared and it, may, it felt very grounded and a lot in alignment with a lot of the other speakers that, and, that come on to Heart of It All. Um, yeah. I want to Take us into, you know, into the one, the first value, which I mentioned mm. is unity. And, you know, in terms of, as, since it's foundational, and it was also where you said, you know, you had this shift that you had personally, this personal transformation of this kind of fear and anxiety. And, and then, and, and that anxiety of like the separateness. And then you really, you moved into this place of feeling the love and connection and um i know that einstein has this great he's kind of like do you think the universe is a friendly place or an unfriendly place and then you act from that place yeah yeah that's so so tell us about that shift like i'm curious about that because for people who are listening you know we all have we 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 all are undoing this sense of that we're separate the science and wisdom traditions are like we're all one <laughs> and we've been living in a kind of separate world. And so we're remembering and there's a lot of un, you know, programming and deprogramming and letting go of these thought patterns. And you had a profound experience that let you feel that oneness and feel that love. Was that like a choice in you? Was it something that you then realized and went, Oh my gosh, was it an aha? Was it, Something more that you cho you you began to choose into, and it started to happen around you. How how was that for you? I like you say, I started to choose into it, and it just kind of built built upon itself. Mm-hmm. I I did you know hit almost rock bottom where I was having trouble holding down a job. I was such mm-hmm. a nervous wreck. I was on a lot of medications. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and that made it even harder for me to function. Um, I mean, at one point I was shaking so badly from anxiety that I couldn't even, I had all plastic cups in my house cause I dropped everything. I couldn't hold mm-hmm. on to things. My mm-hmm. hands and head shook so bad. Mm-hmm. So it was really a physical manifestation mm-hmm. of anxiety and then also, you know, trouble, um, mm-hmm. you know, just being in the world. So mm-hmm. I had to decide that I wanted to (laughs) change that and you know one of the things that I did well first the first thing was that I got a copy my dad gave me a copy and he doesn't even remember doing this of Deepak Chopra's seven spiritual laws to success Mm -hmm. and I started practicing that Mm -hmm. and I noticed that I started just feeling better you know I started (laughs) You know, I started mm. smiling more, and I noticed that as I started smiling more, people smiled at me. Like, I, mean, I realized that when I wasn't smiling and I looked so sad and unhealthy and unapproachable that people were going to avoid me. Mm. And the more that I started to feel, you know, just be there. Like, if I just smile at somebody, somebody just smiles back. My life just started getting better. So, mm. um, yeah, so I did... Uh, you know, I, I started getting more involved in my community and um, ran, I mean, I wasn't even a runner, but I did join the team in training program and, and ran a marathon. And mm-hmm. that just really, I mean, being on a team like that really gave me um, a, a sense of community. Uh, so reaching out to other people and, and building a community around myself. Um, and then I... Uh, my hairdresser gave me a copy of Marianne Williamson's uh, book, A Return to Love. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's based on A Course in Miracles. And it's all about, you know, a shift in our perception from a, a, from fear to um, love and our connection to 
um, the oneness of all things. And so mm-hmm. I, you know, I practice a course in miracles and, um, that is what, you know, transformed my life. But that, that really mm-hmm. came after I made the decision that I was going to, you know, change my life. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you for more of the the vulnerable details and you know, I'm sure everyone listening can relate because we are all human. No one gets to bypass all of this. Some may be ahead of the curve, some are you know, like on the bell curve, you know, you're on different places at different times and Right. And I'll even just say 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 personally, even you know, I feel really in a, an amazing place in my own life and feel very aware of how guided I am and how much goodness there is and the deep trust I have in the divine and the, this, this, this unfolding that I'm in and my alignment as above, so below. And still, in the wee hours of this morning, I woke up with, uh, I'll just, like, fear thoughts. And I, I, I was like, what are these? What are these? And it's almost as if they are not me. And yeah, they're me and they're where, where, whatever. I don't need to identify too much with them, but it's almost like, where are they coming from? And then it's as if in the moment I'm just calling in all this light and I'm going, okay, I know that that is not the truth that's not the truth. That's kind of like a lower, low expression of the truth. And there's this, this kind of process of like love that I pour into my own being and I ask for. And then there's this kind of shifting out of that. And I haven't had one of those mornings for a while and they feel very real in the moment, especially at 5 a.m., you know, (laughs) and when it's like, I can't do this, I, I, it's too hard, or it won't work, or whatever the thought is, that's a kind of, like a fear-based thought, and I've come to see, it's like, where does that thought even come from? It's like, it's not even coming from me. I don't even know where it's coming from, and I don't let it land inside me, and I don't give it much energy. So I, I want people to feel, like, kind of recognize that we're all in this process of, like, choosing these kinds of values, however you want to name them. These are your naming of unity and community and life and freedom and connection and sustainability and creativity and empowerment, choice and integrity. I mean, those, they feel good to even name them. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and choice is a big one of what we're talking about, that, you know, we have the freedom to choose what we create and destroy how we act and how we react, mm-hmm. um, what we value and how we live. Mm-hmm. And But how we react, you know, when we wake up at 5 a.m. with fear running through us is because of some dream or what's going on in, in our lives, you know, we have a choice of how we're going to react to that. And like you said, don't put a lot of energy into it. I think one of the things that... I I did when I was much younger and racked with anxiety was I would start to, you know, I'd wake up at 5 a.m. with the anxiety and I would let it snowball and it would just mm-hmm. snowball and snowball and snowball mm-hmm. until I couldn't function. Mm-hmm. And, and so I really learned, you know, the power that I personally had to not give it energy, just decide to smile at somebody, decide to join, mm-hmm. go out with a friend, decide call someone, decide to go running, you know, just change what's going on at that moment. And that changes our biology, that changes our Mm -hmm. nervous system, Mm -hmm. and that changes when we change our nervous system and how we're, Mm -hmm. the state that we're in, that changes how people react to us, (laughs) and that changes everything around us. So Perfect. That's exactly, I love that you took us there into that 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 place of epigenetics and that our and our bodies. I mean, if we think of ourselves as let's just say we have 150 trillion cells. I mean, we can maybe be conservative and say 100 tr- trillion cells. <laughs> and there's all this DNA in this body, and there's all this wisdom in this this kind of incredible cosmic ecosystem inside our physical bodies. And we're choosing uh, that so key 
the the role of our choice, like the freedom of 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 choice. I love what your that chapter in the book about choice is a very powerful one, and what you were just saying, and that it feels better, and that when we don't let it snowball, it's like that choice we can move out of it so much faster than we realize. Like coming back into the values that we we want to have in our lives. Instead of going down into the kind of, uh, uh, I would call it like a downward uh, uh, spiral, like vortex, it can pull mm-hmm. us in, and we then we create stories. Pretty soon, we've got like a, a story that we have created as a reality, and then we believe the reality instead of actually going, where did that even start from? Right, and yeah, I mean, I I I completely agree, and the way that you you know framed it with all the cells in our body and that we're a microcosm of the whole. That's mm-hmm. really important. I talk about that a lot in my book that, you know, I, I talk about how we're all one body of life, but then we can, we can practice, I mean, with our own bodies. I mean, mm-hmm. I take it even a step further sometimes. And if I, you know, if things aren't going well in my life or I wake up at 5 a.m. super anxious or I, mm-hmm. you know, feel like, I can't do this, you know, or I feel sick. I sometimes I'll just say to myself, I call upon all the cells in the kingdom called mm-hmm. parents. And, beautiful. I love and this. What a beautiful practice. Like, Perfect. Tell the, talk to them because, um, you know, the cells in my body are a community mm-hmm. making up this body that I, that mm-hmm. I inhabit. And I see it as the evolutionary impulse is, and the universe is actually manifesting through that community. So it really is, uh, you know, that we are each a microcosm of the whole. Mm-hmm. That is so, I, I love that. Thank you, Karen, for taking us even more deeply in one of my paths and where I'm devoted is, is embodiment and it's the, it's life and light and source coming into our bodies. It's the divinization of matter. It's, there's joy residing in all my cells. And, you know, I, I, you and I have a belief that we're wired. We didn't just make up these global values. (laughs) They're actually life expressing itself. You know, we are one, we are in community life is like flowing through all things. There is freedom systems that you, that's, that's like at the heart of this. So it's, um, you're, you're naming that which is. And so we're tuning back to it. So when I forget and I'm like, all of a sudden these kind of crazy sort of thoughts, it's almost like I can just embrace myself. Like you're just like, Oh wait, call in like the body. You're calling on the body intelligence of this, the oneness that is Karen or the oneness that is Sherry or the oneness that is whoever are listening, just like put your own name in that. And, um, it's a beautiful way to make the divine so personal in our own, in our own bodies. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, another, so then as we shift our own bodies from fear to love, then we're more able to manifest that in the world and work in these various sectors of society to shift our social structures from fear to love. And and one of the ways that I'm utilizing these values is to even reframe them. So, you know, values have been used to polarize people, um, especially in politics. Um, and in religion, you know, um, choice has become pro-choice and pro-life. Freedom has become, um, the gun lobby. Um, you know, these, these words and words are important. These words have been spun to have different meanings within our social, uh, in the, in the social context. And what I am attempting to do in this book is to reframe them to tell a mm. different story. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. We're in a we're in a process of telling a different story and these values are at the foundation of that story and we can if we speak about consciousness, we need the distinctions 
of consciousness and these values to me are they're like aspects of that the divine nature that is within us that we all know it feels so much better to feel these things than to feel separate and fearful and isolated and angry and you know have our egos making us super small and we're not good enough and no one loves us <laughs> you know right. i mean it goodness it's just... it is and we have all been there all of us and you know i love this little story of of the aikido master osensei and with his students who were looking at him as so as such an exemplar of of a human being and and also sort of lamenting and saying well we're just your students and you know we have a harder time and you look how easy it is for you you never get upset or get angry or you always just love everybody and you never get off track and he he laughed and he said oh oh i get off track i just get back really really fast yeah and i love that and this is an invitation for us for all of us here in this like we're choosing i th- i think that's a beautiful um one of these values like our that we are choosers we are creators we get to choose it's like this free will idea we're not being told what to do you know we get to choose and the hopi prophecy reminds us banish the word struggle from your vocabulary and then we have this invitation to like oh of a great master um of the of akito who yeah he gets off all the time but he gets back so fast and i think that's what happens when i can feel the fear instead of it like or some story or some thought or some strange thing that doesn't feel good i can move out of it really fast because i'm like oh i know my true nature mm get back to that and there's almost like a place where i don't have to use my mind but i can let my body re pattern that and call upon the wisdom of this body known as sherry and the the deep essence nature that is like you know humming and thrumming inside of each of our bodies Yeah. I totally agree with everything you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I think that the that's one of the great things about for me for having written these values down and mm-hmm. written the book about them is that it's such a joy to talk to people about it mm-hmm. and share these common experiences. Um you know and become more actively involved in both my process and and helping other people with their process so that we can co-create something new together that actually works for the world uh, it's just really exciting it you know it is really exciting and i'm i'm on page 123 looking at the the call to action and and also the the practice that you invite people into and then you have the 10 values in sort of just uh, you know short a uh, couple sentences for each one of them and uh i that um the kind of the invitation for this call of of to action feels like the moment is right like you've been nurturing these for a long time and like many visionaries we receive some guidance and we see something and we we see it and the, the world doesn't see it the world doesn't see it it's it's not time it's not time it's not time and then it's time so you know we have about uh 10 uh we have 12 minutes and you know i want to talk about this upcoming event um not to focus on the event but to talk about it as a as a space a context for what's possible for this movement a values based movement or for social transformation which i i pretty much can say most everyone i know of is looking for a better way of living everybody wants to live in a, a healthier world with where our our systems are healthier where we have better healthcare we have access to you know people have ho- housing and food and water and we take care of each other i mean this is just how then shall we live right this is the this is as simple and and as deep and profound as you can get and here you have written this book global values 
a new paradigm for a new world. It's beautiful, elegant framework and naming. And then there is this wonderful event that I'm a part of, um, uh, playing a, a role with um, some aspects of it, yeah. down in Mexico in a month called, it's the World Forum on Human Values. And um, this is the seventh annual um, and there's last year there was like 6,000 people there and you know, it's, it's a, a world forum on human values. Um, you're, you're planning on going there. Um, is that correct? Yes. I'm so excited to, to join that. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it seems perfect for you to be there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, Fantastic timing. Um, it, I actually found out just um, sh- a short while ago, but, you know, um, Barbara Marks Hubbard will be there and Irvin Laszlo and um, many under- other wonderful speakers that, you know, I hope to be able to have this conversation with mm-hmm. or at least get a copy of the book, too, um, mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I really uh, have, have been... I, well, I agree with them. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I'm so excited that I agree with, with the approach of focusing on values for social transformation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think it will be really exciting to talk to people more about it. Right. So, so exactly. It's, it's perfect that you're going. I'm very happy that you're going. And I will certainly do my, my small bit to, to encourage the, the powerful um, connections that can happen there. And I'm participating with uh, Barbara in a global uh, social synergy prototype with um, 12 leaders using the wheel of co-creation and mapping their innovations and their needs and uh, and resources and and it's a it, you know we're prototyping we're experimenting and using a technology platform etc. And, and I, it, it's also a question of how to use these values for movement building. Not all of those speakers, they're, they're, they have spheres of influence and they are influencers and they're doing some amazing work in the world. And they're not, it does not always translate into movement builders or, um, uh, people who are on the ground and are social organizers. Um, so we need, we need kind of both and, um, and I would, you know, I'm curious about what, if you have thought at all about how this can get into certain networks or movements, you know, and I'm thinking of like Occupy Wall Street, you know, it's it's kind of a little dormant right now, but I know that there are people who are wanting to see it come into its kind of, you know, version 2.0 of a movement um, that can that can gather more of the attention of people and that, you know, I'm curious if maybe they had these, you know, because people criticize them for like, oh, you just don't know what you're all stand for. And you're like too, you know, you know what you're against. And, and I'm like, wow, what if they were like, well, we have these global values (laughs) here. They are. We love them too. We love them. This is what we stand for. Like that's actually a very elegant intervention in a system because I can't imagine people going, no, I don't really think we're for these no I don't know no they would all go yes 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 they would say yes so I'm I'm curious about the the big event space because it's a forum and it's a human values and my goodness I would love to see you be one of the speakers perhaps that's like for next year um and maybe you can be an influence in some of the designing of this forum for next year um but also in the movement building side of things yeah I would love to see these uh, values adopted by, um, you know, various groups who are working for a better world, including mm-hmm. the Occupy movement. Um, that's my next step, and that's my, um, you know, we can say my, my mission is to mm-hmm. is to talk to people about these values and about mm-hmm. my book. The book was just to lay the groundwork and to explain, tell mm-hmm. the story. And now the, the, the goal is to um, collaborate with mm-hmm. various groups out there and mm-hmm. actually have these serve as, as the DNA or a common thread bringing together these various sectors of society. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for, for social good. Um, you know, in my day job, I am a, an attorney, um, uh, and I call myself a technology attorney because I've worked in the tech space my whole career, starting with e-commerce and privacy, and then I moved to software and then software and hardware, um, doing phones, and then uh, moved to doing video uh, and interoperability of the distribution of digital content. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and right now, I'm you know, the general counsel of Ultraviolet, which is a consortium of movie, movie studios, retailers, and service providers walking together for a common purpose. So there's a lot of, you can make great analogies of that mm. consensus building and bringing together powerful people who have diverse interests and actually building an interoperable technology platform mm. Mm. for the delivery of digital content could be very applicable to mm-hmm. um, this social transformation movement. And I'm hoping mm. that I can bring those skills um, together with these values to those communities. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, it's a beautiful um, analogy, and I, I would trust that the universe has created these experiences for you and this these work environments in order to then be able to build on them. Right? Nothing goes to waste. Right? <laughs> and, you know, it's it's really quite beautiful. I get I feel like we get to see more and more of how our lives are um, uh, kind of woven to be like, oh, that's that experience is going to serve in, in an incredible way, and you get to actually see it see it really right here right now we don't always get to see it so soon sometimes it takes a while for it to be like oh that's why i had that experience um yeah well it's taken a while but now it's starting to become clear (laughs) right well exactly and how grateful are we for when it's like oh yes now i see and now it's here and now it's time you know this i'm i'm so excited as you and i have talked about this and i'm really looking forward to collaborating with you in this this space because I've been certainly in that movement building world. Um, you know, we, we just have a couple more minutes and I want to make sure that we give people the, the a website, the URL so that they can find out more, get your book, stay connected and, and um, uh, participate. Yeah. Um, would you like to say the website, or should I list them off? I don't know. Um, why don't you Why don't you list? You know, you know, which, maybe not too many. Maybe. Right. There's a lot, but there's a. If you, the best place to go is ourneweevolution.org. Uh, that's my website, and that links to all of the social media. Mm-hmm. Um, platforms that I'm on and um, also Facebook like we were talking about mm. on Facebook there's a, a, a big community for global values there and mm. that um, if you just type in global values in Facebook it will come up with a big globe but it's um, facebook.com slash global values movement mm. um, so our new evolution.org and global values movement on Facebook oh that's perfect and yeah, and you'll see on the website that there's also, I'm also on Twitter, and I started a, a YouTube channel as well, um, adding videos that reflect global values. So if you have, if anyone has videos um, that are uh, reflect these values, um, please send those uh, to me through, the, um, through my website so that I can add them to my playlist on YouTube. And also there's a form so that individuals can, you can just use your phone and video yourself saying, you know, what does unity mean to me? What does community mean to me? Make a really short video of what these values mean to you and upload them and I'll add them to my, to the YouTube channel and also to the website. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So we're just in the last uh, little bit. Thank you, Karen. I've been speaking to Karen Miller about her new book, Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World, and also the network and movement that she's been nurturing called OurNewEvolution.org. And uh, thank you for being here with us. I'm very, very excited about what's ahead and how global values can become a very strong um, force for building more of a sense of our, our oneness on the planet. 
Thank you. It was just a, a pleasure speaking with you. I always get so excited talking about these topics, um, and I'm amazed at how quickly an hour flies by. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had more questions. So I um, appreciate you being here, and everyone listening, just really take the time to look these values up and check out the book and also to just feel into these values of unity and community and life and freedom and connection and sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. And thank you for joining us here on Heart of It All. Always happy to have you here and share it with your friends and have an incredible week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to.